what if I were to tell you that out there exists a game in which Vivek, Sotasil, Almalexia, Vanus Galerion, Menemarko, along with many, many, many other characters of the Elder Scrolls franchise, are perfectly present? And moreover, what if I were to tell you that locations such as the Sigi Order, Somerset Isle, Valenwood, Black Marsh, and Black Ridge before it collapsed are also there? For as much of a wet dream as this might seem to any fan of the franchise, it is always unfortunate for me to say that I cannot for the life of me flat out recommend the game in which these events take place in. I am, of course, talking about the Elder Scrolls Online. Where does this hot take stem from? Well, like many people with a public platform, I woke up one fine day craving to talk about lizard people to my audience. So I went through the usual motions of making a video. I pulled out the books, did my homework, and gathered my sources. And as I was doing so, I remembered an incredible story about the hist and its powers that played out in ESO. So I thought to myself, this is great. What better vehicle to explore Argonian lore than a story about the haste which takes place in the depths of Black Marsh. So I boot up the game, start the quest, and very very slowly begin to progress through it. I then go through dialogue after dialogue, fetch task after fetch task, boring puzzle after boring puzzle, and towards the end of the first of seven quests of the questline of Markmire, I feel a daze. So I stopped what I was doing, laid on my bed, and slept for five hours. What might also interest you is that prior to this event, I had a full night's sleep. The first quest alone was enough to put me to bed. And I want to talk about this today. Why is this? What makes the story of ESO such a snorfest to go through? And I have a couple of factors that I want to share with you. Some of them you may have heard of or observed for yourselves if you know or play ESO, and some others I haven't seen discussed that much. And I think that we should talk about these things. I know many things about this ESO game right here, perhaps too much. I want to say I finished like 80% of the zones and gotten full achievements in most of them, so I believe I have a good grip on the matter. And I believe that in its core, ESO suffers from three key issues. No difficulty, no rewards, and creative stagnation. No difficulty. Please observe me killing the average mob during an ESO questline. Now this is me going out of my way to get hit by every single trap inside an Argonian temple. Note that this character is a mage templar wearing DPS gear, meaning it's one of the squishiest builds in the game. And this is fighting the final boss of the Markmire DLC. You might think that this is an unfair comparison since this character is maxed out. Well, no, the world and quest scales with the level of the player. Where there is no difficulty, questing starts to feel like reading a novel. However, here is a nice little thing about reading books. You can read them at whichever speed you like. If you're a quick reader, you can read them quickly. If you want to take your time with them, well, you can take your time with them. What is more is that this lack of difficulty generates a demand to stuff the runtime with what I can only describe as meaningless dialogue. Okay, example time. What do I mean by these two comments? Look at these dialogues and tell me what's the problem with them. A fair question. In truth, I came to rescue Famia. I will admit a certain affection for her. She is kind-hearted and loyal like a hedge gecko or one of your tiny bark dogs. I would not want her to come to harm. I am glad to see you safe as well. Locked away, hidden under mud in lost memories. Understand, our exiles did not want this truth drifting free on the wind. But Zucas trusts you, so I will trust you. Go to the Wither Vault, claim the chime. We will learn its truth together. Here already. You are swift, Ogel. I will give you that. But enough flattery, I think. From now on, all is war talk. We seek the grave stakes of several Deadwater calls and vengeance. I know how we can claim both. Okay, in case you haven't figured it out, let me fix it for you. I came to rescue Famia. I will admit a certain affection for her. She is kind-hearted and loyal. I am glad to see you safe as well. Locked away. Go to the Wither Vault. Claim the chime. We will learn its truth together. You are swift, Ogel. I will give you that. We seek the grave stakes of several Deadwater calls. And vengeance. I know how we can claim both. 
Most NPCs talk very slowly and there is so much other dialogue that serves no end whatsoever. I will now show you a comparison which epitomizes the phrase so similar that it's getting scary. What is us? The Bumbler, Famia, Zucas, the dry scale Cassandra, a nest of weak spines in Ogel treachery. I will not. I am sorry. The Deadwater are a suspicious people, but you deserve my respect and my trust. I will join you in Lilmouth. What? You going to hand me in? Well, here I am. It's going to be the only chance you'll get. Oh, yeah? How do you figure that one out? <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry. See how adding an entire sentence where a oh damn anyway makes everything sound less lively and slow? It's incredible how much faster paced and memorable this quest would have been if instead of dialogue after dialogue followed up by fetch task after fetch task, there was maybe a boss fight that needed some time to learn the mechanics of, or maybe the boss fight just took a bunch of time itself. Zo says that they want the Overland content to be open to anyone at any level, but honestly, I think that's a flawed logic. Firstly, the world already has scaling tools, so what's preventing the player from being able to click a button and raise the difficulty? Challenging questing and accessible questing have no reason to be mutually exclusive in a game that already scales differently. Difficulty. And moreover, I would argue that one of the game's biggest flaws, its slow early game, would be made a lot better had the questing been a lot more challenging. I will never forget the time, because Xanamax knows damn well that slow early game is a major setback of the game, when Josh Strife Hayes said in a live stream that he didn't like ESO because of how slow the early game was, and an employee at Xenomax reached out to him and offered to give him a full powered character just so he can experience the late game and skip the questing. Uh, I actually got contacted by the community manager of the Elder Scrolls Online, and they were like, hey Josh, uh, we know that you think that the early game is quite easy. If you would like to do some late game difficult stuff, let me know and we'll try and get that set up for you. If you have so little faith in the ability of your questing and overall content to entertain people that you are openly acknowledging its faultiness and recommending skipping it all together as the optimal solution, then I am sorry to tell you the obvious, but your attitude just isn't working. And it's a damn shame too, because I love some of these stories. I wouldn't have made an entire video on one of them and now preparing to do another one for another one of them, had I didn't. Now, imagine a world, if you will, where Timmy gets absolutely ass blasted by the main quest at level 10. Instead of snorting through it. Timmy now has to become more powerful. He has to do easier quests so he can level up. He has to improve, adapt, overcome instead of listening to voice actor auditions. He has to hustle for the ending if he wants to learn what happens with the main story. As long as that's the only real thing Timmy is looking to get out of the questing, because that's all he's getting. It's almost memeable how bad the rewards for these quests are. Ah yes, you saved the continent, rescued the king or queen, restored a lost Wait, relic, stopped the evil cult, stopped the evil cult, foiled a conspiracy. No one cares. The reward is always the same. A laughably small amount of gold and a piece of gear that no one ever, ever asked for. If you are doing an extra special quest, you can also get some kind of collectible like an outfit or an emote or some kind of tattoo or maybe, I don't know, something else you can buy a better version of in the crown store maybe? And I don't want to hear a single person down in the comment section going, but me skill points. What about me precious, precious skill points? Bruh, I can go drown in a lake and I will somehow end up with a skill point. Literally. Or, you know, if I'm doing an alt, I can always just throw money in the crown store to get skill points. Without reward, there is less incentive to do something. With less incentive to do something, there is less motivation to do something. See where I'm going with this? There is a reason why the CG questline is so infamous and talked about, despite the gameplay of it being worse than running your tank through sandpaper. You actually get something unique out of it, in the form of more abilities. Technically, for every quest you complete, you get XP, but questing for XP is only efficient in the beginning, when you can't do anything else. Hence why the beginning is so slow. And after a point, the XP from questing becomes a non-factor, and you are way better off doing dailies or farming stuff in Cracklorn. Sometimes you just want to see a cool cutscene or experience the game in a different way. A glorious climax to a story, if you will. And here is what I have to tell you, that around 50% of the zones end by telling you to go somewhere else to experience the final ending, 20% of the zones have nothing noteworthy or interesting as an ending, and only, only 30% of the zones have an ending which is interesting or noteworthy. And in a game where you have to push yourself to experience the final quest, this this is just terrible. It gets even worse when you consider the fact that if you played one of these questlines, you essentially played all of them. Which brings me to my final point. 
Creative stagnation. Warning, the following sequence of words may cause hallucinations, seizures, and increased blood pressure to many ESO yes enthusiasts. Viewer slash listener discretion is advised. <clears throat> Seven main quests. Five or six delves. A bunch of places of interest that are completely uninteresting. One trial. And lastly, two public dungeons. I know, this is the greatest tragedy since that one time the years of Amos are presented. Here is what makes it worse. If you play through one of these locations, you essentially play through all of them. Every public dungeon, delve, or point of interest is the same, but with a different coat of paint. And again, I gotta say, I have very fun memories of these places. It's just that, it's all we're getting. Once in a blue moon they will give an area a special gimmick, but a world event is a world event, a delve is a delve, a public dungeon is a public dungeon, a gathering quest is a gathering quest, and a spade is a spade. I understand that they probably fear that if they do something different, people won't buy it, and that is a reasonable fear. But after one point, come on, you gotta try something new. They there are still groups of people out there doing Cracklorn content, and they're doing it because it is A challenging, and B it doesn't hold your hand. Imperial City is another great example, but it doesn't even have to be that extreme. Surely you can make just a huge area with a bunch of unmarked encounters, and then just let people have fun with it. Listen to me, I'm just trying to look after people here. I just fear that one day I will open up the news to a headline saying, Local ESO player found in bedroom placed in the filler position, foaming at the mouth whispering to himself, two public dungeons, three craftable sets, seven main quests, and even more crown crates. And I haven't even mentioned the amount of things constantly being reused during these quests. Animations are the biggest offender. Cinematography following slowly behind. I remember during the Dark Brotherhood questline, for a single blessed moment, the camera moved while I was talking to an NPC. And it was at that moment that I realized that my eyes were meant to see more than just goodbye options, which are also reused ad nauseum. In conclusion, I ended up finishing Mark Meyer anyway, and the video shouldn't take too long. I also have a bunch of other stuff cooking in the meantime, so more to come. Why did I make this video? Well, contrary to what you might be thinking right now, I do not expect an ESO developer to just see it and go, damn. The YouTuber man is right, we got a hustle on this here feedback. No, I made this video because it is fun to shout into the void. I am also making it as my buyer's beware sign for whomever might be interested in starting ESO for the lore. And finally, this video is a prelude to a greater ESO review coming with Gold Road. At some point before the release of Gold Road, I will make another video explaining some more things about the game, as that review will probably be the biggest video on the channel to date. So get hyped! If you like this kind of stuff, I have a lot to say, that is for sure. But for now, I have said all that I wanted to say. So, bye! I just found a